So we're going to use the sketch drop-down, start 3D sketch, we want to explore equation curve. So just like in 2D, we have, in this case, the only option is a parametric equation. We have three variables, x, y, and z, and we're going to be controlling t from t minimum to t maximum. So in this case, if I say sqrt for square root of t times 2, and then for my y variable, let's say that we're going to do t to the third, and you notice that we're getting a preview on the screen of what this curve looks like. And then for my z variable, I'm going to say 2 times t. And we're going to control this from 1 to 4. So now we get a pretty good idea of how that curve is looking in 3D space. If we view it from our left plane, you can see basically what it would look like as a 2D sketch, in this case a 2D equation driven curve, with only the variables for the left plane. If we look at it from the front plane, again it looks similar to what it would look like with only the two variables for that plane. And from the top, you get uh, an idea of what this would look like with only the two variables for the top plane. But since we're working in 3D with a parametric equation, we have a 3D curve based on all the inputs that we created. Now of course we can manipulate these at any point in time and have a change in the curve. But once we say OK, what we've done is we've created a 3D reference curve. Now just like anything else, this curve is fixed, its geometry is fixed, but we can tweak it and move it around in our environment. Now, obviously that's not something that you generally want to do, but uh, you can certainly move it around and then you can bring it back to the origin if you want. But it's best to leave it in place. Now if we edit equation, we can always go back in and change values and manipulate, for instance, we want it to go from 0 to 0.5 instead of 0 to 4 or maybe 0 to 1. We can always come back and modify those parameters. And that's the case in 2D as well. By simply selecting it, right-clicking, you can edit the equation curve. So once we finish the sketch, that curve is now available to do whatever you need with it. If you need to make some solid geometry based off of it or a surface, we can uh, use it as a revolve. If you're defining, for instance, a fan blade based on some parameters, you can use that information just like you would any other 3D curve. So now let's go ahead and rename that sketch. We're going to call it EQ curve, and then we're going to right click and we're going to change its visibility. So at this point, let's take a look at some of the surfaces that were created. We're going to expand the surface bodies folder and surface one, we're going to right click and make it visible. We're also going to right click and change the translucency. Now, sometimes that can be a little bit hard when we're working with surfaces to see through them. So what I want to do in this case is I'm going to expand the origin. We're going to take a look at the YZ plane. So if we rotate this around, you can see where the YZ plane lies. And we're going to create a sketch on the YZ plane. So when we do this, uh, we're simply going to go to our line dropdown, and we're going to create a control vertex spline. Now it doesn't matter what you create as long as it's included in here. Now when we're working in 2D, if we finish this sketch, what can we really do with this? Uh, there's not, not too much. I mean, we can extrude it as a surface and we could do a few other things with it. But when you go into a 3D sketch, we have some various options here. We have project to surface. So if we take this curve and project it, we're allowed to pick the faces we want it to go on and the curves that we want to use. But notice that this curve is not selectable. And that's because it was drawn in a 2D sketch and it's not drawn directly inside of our 3D sketch. But what we can do is some various options. So if we hop back out of this 3D sketch, we go back into our 2D sketch, and let's take a look at our project geometry dropdown. So now we have the option project to 3D sketch. We can take a face, and what we're doing is we're taking this curve and projecting it to that face, and it's creating a 3D sketch. So now we have a curve that's created on that surface, in this case it's just a simple extruded surface, but we now have a 3D curve and it's created in its own 3D sketch. Alright, so this is a, a very helpful way to do it because a lot of times creating the splines in 3D are a little bit harder to control than they are in 2D. Let's go ahead and hide the visibility of sketch 7 as well as hide the visibility of sketch 6. And notice that in sketch 8, we have uh, this curve that was created. 
right, so if we want to replicate that in 3D, let's go ahead and hide it and go back to Sketch 7, and we'll edit the 3D Sketch 7. We're going to start a spline. Again, I'm going to use Control Vertex, and I want to select a plane, in this case, the left plane. Now, if I look at it from the left, and I've selected the left plane, I'm directly creating this on a 2D plane. So if I rotate my view around, that is on a 2D plane. Even though it's not directly on the left plane, it was created in 2D. So if we rotate this all the way around, you can see that it does not have any geometry going in the third dimension. So now we can take this and we can project it to surface. Select our face, select our curve because the curve is directly inside of our 3D sketch. We can pick a direction and we can also pick some options. Closest point, wrap to surface, and project along vector. So these options allow us the exact same thing that, uh, that we were doing directly inside of the 2D sketch when we were converting it.